more. Uh, I more. presented some and introduced the others. My husband for 31 years. Amen. Yes, yes, my father. He had to be to say boss. 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 Which means business of okay. saving soul. All right. So repeat after me, say Reverend Jones. Reverend Jones. Reverend Jones. Reverend Jones. 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 Preach the word. Preach the word. Not about you. Not about you. It's all about him. It's, it's all about him. him. Give us the word. Give us the word. She was supposed to be here um, to do this, and she texted me, and she was like, Mom, I have a scripture at Family Day to do. Can you do my scripture? Like, okay. So um, we're going to come from Genesis 1, chapter 28, verse 28. Is everyone ready? Amen. Amen. God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over living things that move it unto upon the earth. And we're going over to um, Luke, Luke 15, <coughs> verse 20 through 20 to 24. Amen. 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 And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell to his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and, in I, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Wow. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring him hither the fatter calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For the... For this my son was dead, and it alive again. Amen. He was lost, and is found, and they be, and they began to be married. Good morning, church. Right now, I think you need to give yourselves a hand. Oh, I think you can do a whole lot better than that. I, I, I was sitting back there, and I, you know, I'm trying to keep my composure with the songs that were sung. The spirit in this place is just off the chain. With that, you just give me a little of your time this morning. I'm going to try to stay in the confines of being obedient. Mm -hmm. Even though my big brother, Brother Baskin, is not here, it gets on me about going over the my time limit. I'm going to try to be obedient and do what thus said the Lord. Amen. In that, the scriptures has already been read. This morning, first two topics I want to deal with is the family affair. Family affair. Now, in a family affair, you have family that was first instituted by God. Of course, you know the, the story. Uh, it goes from Adam to Eve, and then it goes from all of the creepy crawling things and fish in the sea. Whatever it was, God created them. 
And he created them in such a way that they were spin. You can even look at things as, as simple as the ant. Let's just start there. You know, the ant goes to and fro in its daily movement or walk of life. You see the ants running colonies where they go picking up things, packing them back into their shelter. You don't know what goes on down in that colony other than thinking that they got to be, must be storing up food for a later date. Pretty much the same scenario goes when about a queen in her hat. She's got all kind of brothers and thrones, her sons running around collecting things to bring them back to produce honey. You don't see the queen bee telling the king ant how to run your business. <laughs> You don't see the king yet telling the queen bee how to run a business. <coughs> now in every family, yeah, yeah. there he is. We're gonna call him Uncle Book. That's an Uncle Book, and you know Uncle Buck is the nicest guy in the world. Long as he ain't drinking. All right. All right. Sweetest guy in the world. Give his shirt off his back. But they can't seem to stop Uncle Buck and what Uncle Buck enjoys doing. Then, nevertheless, you got a, we're going to call her Aunt Louise. Aunt Louise knows everybody's business. Up in everybody's business and got the most potty mouth that you can find on any woman. Mercy, mercy. That's not a good look. That's probably about as bad as a woman that likes drinking. That's not a good look. Now, I'm just going to say it. The Bible doesn't say that you can't drink. It just says stay within the confines of knowing what you're doing. Teach it, man. Teach, teach it. That's what it says. Not much. Much don't mean that you don't got to the point that you don't know that. Tell me, Lord, if you're coming or going. But again, in this family affair, he my uncle Paul. And Uncle Buck does a lot of things that I may not agree with. That you and your own family, regardless of whatever name you attach to, may not agree with. But guess what? In my Uncle Buck, I best always want to be the only one to talk about my Uncle Buck. Well, Don't you talk about my Uncle Buck because then you got some problems. Now, I try to love everybody. Yeah. Want to be loved. The same way with my Aunt Louise. But you just can't stop some people that was raised to do things a certain way. But in that family circle, I remember when things happen, y'all, that's unquestionable, or very questionable. Say, for instance, there's a picture of a young girl that was coming up, fine to look on, and all of a sudden she found herself roaming the streets. And next thing I know, she was assaulted. And they have the baby months later. And it was such a hush-hush that within the confines of your family circle, 
Everybody was cautioned. This is family business. This business needs to stay right up in this house. You don't take it out of this house and share it with nothing and no back. Family business. A family affair. Right. Some things you don't need to worry about how they go get taken care of because I'm told. In this Bible, it says that God sees. Well, he will supply all your needs according to the riches in glory. Mm -hmm. So every time little old us, us is, decide we're going to try to help the master alone, all we're doing is creating some unnecessary movement. Because God know what he do. And he don't need mad, none of us Trying to tell him how to handle his business. Because well. whether you know it or not, every last thing that crawls or walks this earth, we are his business. We was created for no other reason but to give him the praise. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you know, I got to look at this, this family affair. And, you know, it's kind of un unusual over the years. You know, I, you know, I call myself trying to be a as studious as I possibly can. And I got to looking at this particular occasion and lo and behold, I ran across a, a, a statement that was made by my brother Toby, Reverend Monday here, and it was done about 14 years ago. And it was around on the same time of the year. And his message to us was, know your place, Blessings of being on B. Well, well, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The same time we had my big brother by the name of Reverend Will Howard came to us back in 2002. Lost but not found. Well. Excuse me. Lost but okay. came right behind that in 2005, pinned pin to a penthouse situation. Well. Looking at my former past, <coughs> back 12 years ago, <coughs> he delivered a message called A Father Who Cares. All right. mm. Once lost, mm. But now found. Well, well, well. Then to my present past. 13 years ago. God's wisdom to wealth. Mm. I say these things because I'm trying to create this family affair, this, this collection of mind thoughts around this same time of year, this celebration, this family celebration. Yeah, yeah. Now, as I look out, I see a lot of my family. Y'all family. Church family. There's some that I grew up with, some I'm just by association, but y'all are my family. I love you, ain't nothing to do about it. But you know, in having family, that's a beautiful thing. Because, let me tell y'all, there's some of us just choose to be alone. They would tell you they're lost, or they're alone. They're alone, but not lonely. Everybody needs somebody. Days and nights get long, y'all. Well, Everybody needs somebody. Man. That's just an opportunity. Then. If you happen to be one of those, you need to check yourself and put your things in perspective to more or less put yourself out to have more of a relationship with people. Mm -hmm. 
question whether or not you were doing the things that uh, uh, what God would have you be. Well. And then last, before I move on, Paul in Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not be weary in way of doing for in due season if we shall reap if we faint not. Well. A lot of times, our intentions are good. We fail the mark. In our families, we have so much going on that we would just like to sometimes just beat that person down, beat them down, beat them down, to get them to understand something that's just so right in their face. I don't know about you, but I come from a big, pretty big family. And our family of prayers are one that Lord, thank you that you took Jenny from one spot and brought her to another. Because I come to find that you do one to one of us, you got to do it all. Yes. You know, that's, 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 that's it right there. I'm not going to allow you to even think the thought that you can disrupt this unit that we call family. Now, through all of that, as I move to my second, there's always the family reunion. This is a part where usually it don't take nothing. But folk, I don't care what color you are, what denomination, the ethnicity you are, it don't take nothing for us to throw some stuff together to want a party. We love us any type of situation where it involves good music and food. That's part of it. But usually in the communities that most of us raised in, there's always a designated time of the year that we host uh, uh, 10 family reunions. Family year is a good time because we know that we get to eat the best of food, somebody's best potato salad, somebody's baked beans, sweet potatoes, whatever. I'm hungry. See, so <laughs> what, what, what I'm telling you is, in this particular story, this family reunion, we got a man we just going to label him Pops. Pops had two kids. Two sons, two grown sons. And as the story goes, Pop said did everything that possibly a parental figure in a man without a wife could do. He had raised his sons to be some upstanding brothers. To not want to want for nothing. And as the story goes, you know, sometimes as I heard somebody say, you get to smelling yourself. Well, well. The youngster of the two decides he's going to approach Pops and say, hey, Pops, I'm, you know, I'm getting bored. You know, I'm getting tired of running around here doing the same thing every day. So what he decides to do was he decides to confront his father's compassion by suggesting that his father break him off something. The Bible says something that was falling to him. I don't understand it, but how you figure you got something coming that you ain't put nothing in? It? All right, all right. How did that happen? You, you ain't put nothing in. But the young boy determined, mm -hmm. as most of them be. Because yes, see, the problem is with that is, mm -hmm. this is a child that for years spared the rise, Mercy. spoiled the child. Mercy. Mercy. Perfect example. So Pops being Pops, very calm brother, 
says, okay, I'm not going to argue with you and ask why you want me to give you my money, not knowing what you plan to do with that money. So what ultimately happens is, Pops break him off. He breaks him off. This is your, this is your brother. Well, the boy packs up all this stuff. Now, that you can imagine that all the servants, look, Pop got it so well, you can almost say he's like, got 40 acres and a mule, and he got servants. He got people living on his property that he pays to take care of the sheep, the cows, or whatever. The feed, the, the look after everybody. He got people specifically for that job. So, when all this is going down, us, you know how we be. You know the servants is probably out in the shed and say, oh my God. Who is this boy think that he can just come up and ask his daddy for something like that? Who does he think he is? Well, gee, I've been out here slaving for years for the master. And he ain't thought enough about me to give me an extra even break of bread. But we're going to see where this goes. Well, as the story goes, the young boy packs up his stuff and he goes to a far land. Yeah. Now, he gets there, y'all. He ain't made no plans. In a family structure, you always got to have some kind of plan. Amen. Amen. He ain't made no plans to how he's living. <laughs> Whenever he gets to wherever he gets to. Wherever he gets it, next thing you know, he's just like any typical fool. He's flashing money. So much to the point that he attracts some of the most undesirable people, let's say that. Well. Next thing you know, you got women on the street, yeah, that's right, doing that time they had hookers too. Mm -hmm. The hookers decide, hey, I'm going to give me some of this money. So they did everything possible to acquire his pocket. If he wasn't doing that, he was drinking. He was just doing any and everything he could, brother told me. But as time goes along, no plan, money dwindling. It got down to the point that his pockets was next to being dry. Well, you didn't make no type of investment, so what do you think is going to happen? Well, lo and behold, as the story tells us, it had got so bad he broke, disgusted, can't be trusted now. Now, this is a boy that was living a very lucrative life before he decided to go on doing his own thing. Well, <laughs> Sometimes you just can't tell somebody nothing. Well, when they are set on a path, you just got to let them go sometimes. You just got to let them go. Well, he's at a point now that he's going to destroy himself. To the point now, he's got to beg his way back to eat, be able to have an opportunity to eat. Now, I don't know about y'all. Every opportunity that I get to break bread, I'm thankful for it. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Every opportunity. When God provides shelter, thankful for it. All right. Yes. Yes. When God provides the ache and the pain, yes. thankful for it. Yeah. 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 When God provides your coming and your going, well, thankful for it. Right. Whatever, be thankful. In due season, if you keep doing what God planted each and every heart to do, you're going to be here well off in the busy. But, get back to the story. The kid now has to ask a formidable individual in that country, for all country, for some help. All right. He literally begged him. But you know, when your stomach gets to growling, and that joker gets to talking to you, and it's still made all kind of tunes and songs, this, that, and other, in and every one of us is about ready to do whatever's necessary to quench that hunger. Yes, sir. Yes. 
Clay the task, man, my brothers have been off up in the area now. Our stomachs just get to growl out and they talking to each other. <laughs> you know, this is where this brother was at to the point now he's begging. <clears throat> God gives him a job to tend some pigs. <laughs> now, this is one of the nastiest jobs coming from him and his background. He didn't want to have no association with pigs. Pig was just unclean thing for him. It, 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 it just wasn't for him. He wasn't raised like that. But he takes the job knowing that, hey, I'm so hungry. I, you don't want to be able to eat or have an opportunity to eat what the pigs eat. He's ready to get into the slot pen to yes, eat what the pigs eat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's so many of us out on the streets to this very moment, mm -hmm. we see them with their signs says, hungry, we'll do anything. We're so busy not trying to get into our pockets, our purses to deliver something to them because you're too busy wondering once you give it to them, will they do the right thing in feeding their self away? That ain't none of your business. God gave you blessed you with so much increase that your reasonable portion ought to be to want to help them. Well, it ain't about you knowing them. Well, it ain't about you knowing them. But when you're helping them, you are showing the very essence of God. All right, all right. The God that you say, all that right. we say, right. that we believe in. Right. Yeah. See, so you just can't one minute walk to walk if you ain't ready to talk to talk. I talk to talk. You got to be able to do both. They got to balance out. The boy makes his way to the point now he's got to lower his pride. Boy, that pride thing is something. When you, <laughs> when you realize you're going to do it all you can, and now you find yourself in a humbling situation well, yeah. that you got to come back wow. and apologize for being a nut. Well, yeah. right. straight nut. Somehow or another, he gets a clear thought that day. Gee, I can't keep doing this. I need to make my way back home. So much to the point now, he's going to travel. Now he's going to board it on to what's familiar. This pop's property. Getting to the edge of the property, by this time, every servant that came out of their shed and you know, oh, they got plenty to say, how dare him be? Who is this? It's, no, not you. Not you coming back home. You, you had every reason to leave. Now why are you coming back crawling, begging? Gee, now you cutting off into my potato salad and my baked beans because now you back home, you want something that I just got. Well, it's Pops. Bless his heart. It's a Pops. Seeing all the commotion on his property, and, you know, then when he looked in the direction, you think I see what I think I see. Pops decide he's going to run to him. You know, there's very seldom far in between we as father think we go to our babies like that. You know, we, we hear to think our babies need to come to us. A lot of times, you got to put yourself in a, in a humbling situation. You know, because if you're raising young men, you want to be the example well, for them. Well. You want them to prosper, you got to be a prosperous person. If you want to lead an upright life, you got to show that's what you're doing. 
I know what I'm talking about. Because y'all, so only a few of y'all within these confines of these walls knew who Jimmy used to be. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Jimmy was a mess. Mm. But see, until the master mm. got hold of me, mm. snatched my coat, <laughs> snatched me to a point that I realized that all the things that was implanted in me by way of J.B., my father, and Henry L. Jones, my mom, we call it tiny. But at the end of the day, where the way the story ends is, his pops ran to him and he was so overwhelmed in sin. He didn't care about all the mess and how long he'd been gone. He didn't care about none of that. Yeah, right. He was just glad his baby boy was back home. <laughs> Even when he didn't understand why, he didn't question why. He was just glad baby boy was home. Amen. Amen. So much he caught the attention of all the men and little servants out on the property now talking stuff. He said, hey, what y'all need to do now is quit running your mouth. Well, then you go get these particular items. I want you to get a robe. Put it on him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Get a ring, put it on his finger. Yeah. I don't even know if he has shoes, but get him the best sandal. Yeah. Put him on his feet. Yes, Why are you doing that? Mm. It's a time to party, so mm. I want you to go find the fattest of the fat. Mm. The fattest one. Bring me in here because we barely roast. So we can have, have us some serious wheat. Well, a windy roast, we're going to have us a nice pig roast going on. Everybody's going to eat good that day. All right. Everybody did eat good that day. All right. But see, always a little clinch to the story. All the time this is going on, you got the other brother still in the field. All right. Lord help him. He's in his feelings now. Because his baby brother done came home. And when he's approaching the big house, you hear all this music going on, all this laughter, all this happy, happy coming out of the house. Big brother standing out there trying to understand what's going on. To the point now that Pops says, hmm, where my elder at? So he goes out and finds his elder son and they had somewhat of a confrontation because the oldest son felt like, how in the world you allow this boy to go away from here for so long and you invite him back like ain't nothing ever happened. And you want me to feel good about that. Now, what the problem I got is all the time that boy my brother has been out doing him. I've been right here by your side, waiting on you, hand and foot, doing what God wanted me to do. Why isn't it that now this boy can do wrong and come home and you treat him royalty? Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine why come you ain't thought enough about me to have a pig roast for me and my friends like that. Mm -hmm. The moral is, is Pops tells the oldest, all the time you was with me, mm -hmm. you missed it. Mm -hmm. You had everything that right. I ever acquired right. in my life. It's yours. Why isn't it that you didn't understand that? You were so busy worrying about the portion that was broken off for your little brother that he squandered, he tore up this, that, and other. But look here. When it's all said and done, he was dead. The word said, 
When he was out there, he was dead. Pops didn't know if he was coming and going. So, when he was able to come back home, it, it was a celebration, a family reunion. And that's the family reunion that I come to remind you of every day. It's folk in your own families. I know what I'm talking about. That you have fell out with for some reason or another about stuff that don't make no sense. So much you in your feelings, you don't want to be the first one to take the initiative like pops to run to his son. No, no, no. Instead, you still want to be difficult, hard nose. But let me tell you something. God decides there's a, there is a time and a place for everybody. If you don't get the opportunity before God calls that person home my to my glory, my. then you stuck with what mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you have to deal with what could have should when every day is supposed to be a day of fellowship? You got another chance, thank you. You got another chance. God is so forgiving. As the Sunday school lesson said this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. He's so forgiving. Yeah, he Even when we turn around and just blame and say, I ain't doing it. He turned around and gave you another shot anyway. Yes, thank you, Lord. Yes, he you ain't going to get that much love at times from your own people. This day, as I go to close, here's the focus I want you to have when you leave this day for this family day. Each and every one of us has an opportunity to fix some stuff in our own personal circle. Yes. Yes. Our own yes. personal circle. Yes. It don't have to be uncle auntie, brother, it could be the next, the man next door, mm. uh, the woman next door, or, or behind you. It could be the individuals that you just grew up automatically called uncle and auntie. But those are the individuals that have always been closely related to your family. You offer them the same respect as you do your mom and your pops. Make no mistake about it, people. Take this day and fix it. Mm. See, you may not get another opportunity. My Lord, my Lord. So true. Well. So true. <laughs> Amen. You may not. But while you still yet have breath, yeah. run it warm in your veins. Yeah. All right. Because the story tells us that a man that allowed himself to be nailed to a cross, Come on now. Yeah. his hands and his feet, yeah. allowed his side to be pierced and yeah. people spit on him. Loud. Loud. Say all the most ungodly things that could be said to a man. Yes, sir. He allowed. So much to the point that the thief on the other side said, man, you, you're doing good stuff. Take me with you when you go. Well, well. Came time, the thunder roared, the skies could pop it all over everywhere. The master, before he passed, said, Father, mm. for they give them, for they know not what they do. Yes, 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 yes. He willingly Went to the Father. Yes. Willingly. Yes. It's the key word today. Willingly. You have a choice to fix what's broken. Be the willing worker, as the old folks say. In and out of this place. Model your life this day going forward. To be the example of family. Someone needs to know 
that somebody cares enough about them to say, hello, goodbye, how you doing? Whatever the case may be, you don't know what every individual goes through on a daily basis. We all got so much mess that we deal with on a daily. Ain't fun. Some of them we can share. Some of them we choose not to share. But the Lord said, I will never leave you. Thank you. Not for sure. And today, guys, that's good news. Because a family that stays together will always pray together. To God be the glory. If I just happen to say something in my weak way today to inspire you the doors of the church are open. We here at this little church beside the road the lights the band like to think of it this is a small place where we got big hearts. Amen. We got some big hearts up here. We got some good people up here. Amen. We don't always agree, but ain't no problem with agreeing to disagree. No problem with that. But when we work together, look what we have been able to do. Thank you, Lord. Look at what in this short period of time, when our pastor left, we... A lot of us was in this strop. They were just strop. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Pastor Scott is going, what are we going to do? I need you. Yes. But God always shows up. With a ram in the bus. If you need to be prayed for, you need a church home, please come this way. Ain't nobody's business but you and God. You ain't got to disclose to all of us what you feel. You are important He does forgive. His arms are so wide, he got room for all of us. Please come. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stay with me. Agree with me. Thank you, Reverend Jones.